I think this is kind of speaks upon everything that's been going on with the Pharrell thing. And I think it's really interesting because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of torn. So this is regarding the New York Fashion Week pro debut of Heron Preston. So Heron Preston obviously has been doing his brand for a while. Sorry, for a while now. But he decided to go back home and present his collections because he's been doing, I think he did some in Milan where I think New Gods Group is based, if I'm not mistaken. And then obviously he showed his collection sometimes in Paris because that's become like the menswear flipping destination of choice now going forward, which is a little bit annoying, a little bit cringe. But he's now decided to go back to New York and present it there. And I think this actually tells a far better story for Heron Preston, especially when if you're familiar with the guy, because I've kind of met him, you know, once or twice here and there. And he's a really cool dude and he has a real deep connection with New York and everything around it, his upbringing and his blog and all this sort of stuff so it makes complete sense that he'd go back and debut there and if there's anybody that could kind of maybe revive New York Fashion Week and bring some level of kind of hype and anticipation behind it in the kind of streetwear side of things I think he'd be the kind of great person to do it so and I really like his approach to it especially with the after parties and whatnot going forward so I think him going back to New York is a great idea absolutely love it I looked at the collection and I have to be honest even though I love the guy, to be completely brutally, brutally honest, it may have been one of the most meh collections I've seen for a while in terms of the pieces and what they look like on the runway. If anything, I've seen a lot more maybe refinement in terms of what the pieces actually look like. But in terms of the overall approach to what you would call fashion with a capital F, I'm starting to get a little bit bored of this myself, to be fair. Like, I don't necessarily think streetwear type clothing looks that great on the runway. Maybe this is kind of something that everybody kind of understands but i think i've kind of come to that realization this is coming coming from somebody who is a fervent a fur you know a balls deep 100 percent authentic flipping streetwear fanatic and fan and i can definitely say i think runways don't necessarily need to be plastered with streetwear looks after streetwear looks it just doesn't really pop the same way that fashion with a capital f does because i think there's meant to be a level of refinement a level of escapism a level of i don't know something that's kind of you're meant to be doing if you're doing runway shows i don't think they should look like this in my opinion so maybe that's the issue but of course one of the best things about these type of things is that there are cultural events um you're more there for the person who's designing them and who's walking the runway and there's a lot of De there's a lot of kind of attention to detail that goes into those kind of things I don't think regular fashion brands do or maybe they're more plugged in I guess streetwear brands because I guess that's the nature of streetwear in general you're more attuned to all these different references and stuff that plug you into culture that plug you into actually what's going on in the streets so that's kind of rain into it so everything from the music to the flipping the models that get casted to the pictures of people taking BTS pictures and shit it all kind of ties into it but when I saw this collection I was like you know what first thing first I liked it and it looked great there's some great pieces here and there like this look that bloody Osiris has on with these big massive flipping yeti ski boot type things and the jacket and I'm really 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 loving the pop of that logo now on the bottom sleeve that's kind of permeating throughout flipping hair and pressing products it's really called out in this very short space of time he's been able to kind of create a new piece of branding for himself outside of the style stuff because I thought the style stuff was cool but I thought it got really corny very quickly it's kind of similar to those kind of go faster Balenciaga Oakley type glasses they got corny very quickly as soon as AliExpress started making them and everyone started wearing them they got very very corny very quickly whereas the uh, same thing happened with that style right written in kind of the Russian Slyric uh, Slyric or whatever it's called right and font I think now he's kind of switched over and kind of you know used the branding of that woven orange tab label on the bottom of the sleeve of the jackets I think that works really really well but when I'm looking at the collection and get Harry Preston big up him running down the running down the, the flipping runway, very odd way of running there, but big up him regardless. I just think, I don't know. After a while, this level of you know bringing these type of collections down the runway it can get a little bit tiring. Seeing you know jackets and hoodies and jeans and t-shirts down the runway, especially done in this kind of way, it can just get a little bit like meh this is not something that you should be maybe presenting at all times on runway. So I'm not too sure if the future going forward, there should be like a separate, you know, shows for street wary type 
stuff i'm not really sure how it should go but i can't imagine anybody looking at this and thinking oh this is dreamy i must have this i must have that that's the thing i think as well there's not the, the level of desirability when it comes to um fashion collections or streetwear the streetwear influence fashion collections on the runway isn't necessarily there i just don't think it's not very desirable i'm not really looking at stuff i'm dreaming of wearing it. i'm just seeing clothes essentially kind of paraded down the runway and it doesn't necessarily give you any sort of sense of wonder lust in any way shape or form but maybe again i'm kind of speaking out of turn i'm not really too sure but one of the really things i enjoyed about um Aaron Preston's collection he did in new york was the show invites and how he kind of recycled loads of bits and bobs that he found in the streets and then sent those out as show invites so that there was a kind of full cycle process going on in terms of these kind of found materials being sent out as show invites and if people wanted to chuck them away they could they already kind of found materials anyway or you could keep them and sort of give and brief new life into things that were destined for the scrap heap and he made a really cool video kind of detailing the whole experience here I think you can see a final picture of some of the pieces selected here but here's a picture here's a sorry um, a, a video where he kind of talks about what his inspiration behind the whole thing was and i really really do like how he kind of communicates his ideas and put them forward and like i said prior don't be surprised if heron preston and samuel ross are probably the next group of people or next type next next two people from the kind of school of virgil school of kanye west who then get big fashion jobs going forward i think they're the next two ones going because they've definitely got their ear to the streets they definitely know you know how to kind of plug themselves into certain things definitely how to communicate their ideas in certain ways and they just got it you know what i mean regardless of what i think about it close down the runway they just have it and i think this is definitely a way to kind of see it so this is the video i'm going to play um with her person talking about it there's so many materials that can be perfectly used, right? Like it says on the screen this whole idea is about exploring um circularity by design less new stuff i think you guys here right the full winter show invitation was handpicked by me literally as i searched the streets of new york for discarded objects and materials for anyone's for sorry enough surface area and good enough condition to hold the handwritten details of my show this body of work turned into close to 400 custom made invites each unique if discarded they return to trash and if kept it's a treasure to collect either way it's a win it's a fashion show invitation that does not hold a utility then the chances of it being thrown away are very high and wasted these invitations are part of a small look into larger picture of my led practice less environmentally destructive and it, it kind of reminds me if anything reading it it's kind of giving a lot of tom Sachs. it's also giving a lot of something that you may do in college or something like those kind of core cool, interesting far out ideas that you present and um, somewhat in the pursuit to create a kind of utopian brand that kind of does the best to kind of uplift humanity and all this sort of kind of stuff you know when you're really optimistic back in the day and you're not nihilistic and stuff and you're older that kind of reminds me of this kind of energy so i do like the fact that he kind of maintains that um almost um naivety naivety and kind of kitty part about him when it comes to creating i think that's really Im Im imperative when you're creative to be curious and to be kind of childlike in your approach it kind of does really serve you well the moment you start to become embittered nihilistic and maybe a little bit too critical of things is maybe when the creativity sort of faucet kind of stops in some regard i think so so i do like this approach i really do like this approach anyway back to the video keep those in circulation like why couldn't this just be like a sick invite now it's up to the receiver to contemplate right in their brain like wait a minute you got this off the street wasn't this trash but now it's used as an invitation do i yeah. keep it if I throw it away, well, I, I won't feel so bad about throwing it back away, right? Because that's kind of... He's G-Wagon sick. Marker the circulation it. of invitations anyways, if they're not functional, if there's no utility, they kind of end up in the trash. Looks so like, I don't feel so bad about returning it back to where it came from. And then just put the sticker right, right in there. Give that a try. Puffs. I wonder if my envelopes are big enough. <laughs> what up? Slightly, slightly gross. Coolest thing I found. I don't think I want a book. But I feel like I, I found this day. It's a fucking book. Uh, sheetrock, piece of the side paneling of like a kitchen cabinet. A oxy clean bottle. That was kind of cool. Cardboard. 
It was like a number on it. Like, a, is this like to a safe? What is this? I got my invite. I'll take these. Loki, I think there's dog pee on this one. There, there is a bit of a selection, selective process. Cities to me can be looked at like these spaces of like. Of layers of materials, right? Like and I'll just stop it there. And obviously, if you see here by the picture, you've got a final selection of some of the pieces that he was able to kind of pick out and kind of use and repurpose as show invites. And it's a pretty cool and sick idea. But I was just thinking about it, looking at it overall. The really interesting flicking story to tell about her impression and his journey to becoming this kind of guy that has an actual legit fashion brand is that when I met him in general, what kind of drew me to him was kind of his communication ability, his ability to kind of communicate ideas, to put to put forward you know different propositions he was always kind of really optimistic as well which i kind of enjoyed and liked and he was kind of young at the time and someone i can kind of look up to in terms of having to try and get it and try and make things happen in the big city that you're living in but one thing that i really admired about his journey was that in my opinion he was never a fashion guy like i never looked to him as somebody that you would describe even as even stylish back then he was never really someone that had any drip in my opinion he was always somebody that just came across cool and that's something that you don't necessarily get nowadays with kids i feel like i feel like a lot of kids put a lot of value in like what they wear what they listen to and stuff but how they most how they present themselves as opposed to what they are as a person and for some reason I don't know how he did it maybe because you know the power of communication through blogs and pictures and whatnot and videos he was able to communicate and permeate uh, a, a vibe of somebody that was inherently just cool without looking cool like he didn't have any like I don't you know maybe he has you know he obviously had some cool trainers back in the day because we were all buying the same sneakers back then we we're all collecting we we're all on night talk and shit that might have been added to it but when I think of like outfits and style and looks I can never really picture him wearing any crazy amazing looks if anything he only started to kind of look cool quote unquote when he started to hang out with all the fashion dudes and Virgils obviously doing stuff with Jown making his Givenchy t-shirts hanging out with the Liam McSweeney and whatnot doing the marriage and whatever because I think there's that famous picture of like you know Liam McSweeney getting flipping um you know um what you call it getting held up by her legs and performed you know uh, a, a simulation sect act and allegedly the person in the monkey suit was actually Aaron Bresson I think in the gorilla suit or something so I think when he started to go down that road is when suddenly he started to kind of you know show some acumen for being able to do that but it also maybe shows that if you're creative and you have cool ideas maybe that goes back to the Pharrell thing it doesn't matter what medium you're presenting you're probably going to smash it if you've got cool ideas you're creative because if you give this guy I'd imagine if you give Aaron Bresson the idea of like you know um uh, re, I don't know, restarting a convenience store and kind of, you know, outfitting it on the inside and designing the layout and whatnot and the store uniforms and the teal systems and whatnot. You'd probably be able to do a pretty good idea in terms of understanding how people flow and the traffic and people in the store and habits and whatnot. Probably they could apply it to it. You'd imagine every, any, regardless of what it is. So it doesn't, wouldn't need to be clothes, wouldn't need to be flipping anything to do with fashion. It could be architecture, it could be flipping consumer products and you'd imagine you'd be able to present it in a good way. And like I said, I, I wonder why nowadays the kids don't have the ability to do that whereas I think one of the good things about the kids now is that a lot of them for the most part they don't see any sort of reverence or importance to being the marketing guy at Nike or Adidas or like to be the head is you know the head influencer person that I don't know Stussy or something they don't care about that thing and I think when my generation we cared about that more we cared about those Nike marketing role manage the Nike energy marketing role manager roles more we went to know who was doing who was doing that I mean influencer regard roles social media roles we cared about that thing more so Whereas I think these kids nowadays, they want the big jobs or they want to start their own brands or they want to be their own production, you know, have their own production company, have their own film studio, have their own, you know, um, styling, cre um, cre creative consultancy and whatnot. They don't just see themselves as employees, see themselves more as bosses. But like I said, I think a lot of their kind of inherent self-worth comes from the work they produce and it and it always the stuff that they wear but very rarely do you see a lot of them that have that pure undeniable soul of somebody
somebody just really cool who kind of gets it and is kind of destined to win. And I think Heron Preston always kind of had that in him. So I think going forward, I can definitely see Heron being the next guy that ends up getting offered or even maybe he's been approached already for a big fashion uh, label or house job. I see him getting it. I see, obviously, um, what's his name? Uh, Samuel Ross being another one and I also think if Givenchy end up making a big mistake and firing Matthew Williams or parting ways I can definitely see him bouncing straight back up or bouncing straight back and kind of get another role with somebody else because I think the cultural relevancy the the fact that they have the kids in their palm of their hands and they're cool and they're kind of you know attached and linked to certain musical artists and whatnot that goes a real long way with these brands because they know what that does to the metrics behind the scenes and whatnot so I can definitely see them kind of targeting that approach and use that as something to kind of go forward but as always like I said big up Heron Preston for presenting in that full winter um 23 collection it wasn't really my favorite overall i'm kind of getting tired a little bit of seeing streetwear type stuff on the runway i'm not sure it's the best real medium and platform for it but i do see some improvement and some real panache and finish and you can definitely tell that there's a production company that are putting this together or sorry that are producing and manufacturing a lot of the bits obviously because he's working with new guys group the same people that were kind of in business with virgil and it definitely helps in terms of putting out your ideas and kind of having a coherent theme message kind of running through and the quality standards obviously really really much improved but i just not too sure if this kind of requires a runway that's the one thing that's kind of really i'm kind of women and worrying about if you're a kind of a streetwear person should you really be putting yourself on a runway and does it kind of somewhat have the opposite kind of thing in terms of you know how it kind of has your brand being perceived but again maybe i'm talking out my ass who bloody knows who bloody knows